kind of talk to you a little bit this morning from the Word of God. I want to talk about the continuation of God's good work. Say that with me while you're turning. The continuation of God's good work. That's the Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1. Did I say Ephesians? Okay. Uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. My mind, Sister Ruby, must be stuck in Ephesians. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Some would say that's just a testament to show that I'm getting older. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. We want to talk about uh, the continuation of God's good work. Man. When you have it, so I have it, you could look at it in front. Find Philippians and go right there to it. Amen. I want to say good morning to all of our guests. To all of those that are tuned in to this broadcast. We certainly welcome you into our service this morning. Amen. God bless all of you. Man. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. I want to thank the deacons and uh, the elders for the reading of Revelations. As you all know, if you don't know, every Wednesday night we're teaching a series. We're actually in the book of Revelation. So we are teaching from the book of Revelation. Those of you that's watching you can also tune in to our broadcast every Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Man, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, if you have it, it, it reads, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. As I go on to verse 7, even as it is meant for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Amen. You may be seated. May the blessings of God be upon you this morning. The continuation of God's good work. Say that with me. The continuation of God's good work. Say it again. The continuation of God's good work. Now look at someone else and say it again. The continuation of God's good work. And this is what we want to uh, put into your hearts this morning because there seems to be confusion all over this world as to because one becomes saved, one becomes a Christian, uh, is that we should be walking uh, in such a way that there should be no flaws when the Bible says that uh, there is sin in our flesh. We don't teach to practice sin. We don't give you a license to sin. It's already in our nature. Amen. Uh, it can come through our thoughts. It can come through how we treat one another. It can come through the things that we say. The rebellion is against God. It can come through different forms of sin. But what we want to understand is one, because most people kind of uh, either put down others or we become our worst critics. Uh, I'm speaking from experience for myself is that when I know I have done something out of the character of what Christ is, I'm more hard on myself because the Bible says if we judge ourselves, then God would not judge us. So I'm more critical to myself because I know how I should be living what I should and should not do. But even Paul himself in his greatest uh, point of his life uh, stood back and said that the things that I should do, I find myself not doing them. And the things that I ought to do, I find myself not. And the things that I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. Oh, what wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So when we look at the continuation of God's good work, is that when God created, God had begun a good work in all of us. And when God noticed the scripture says what he says in verse 6, he says, being confident of this very thing. So what we're looking at in, uh, this is a personal letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians and was not intended for the general 
circulation as he written all the letters to Ephesians. And that's why my mind was on Ephesians because the letters that Paul wrote to Ephesians, it was generated uh, and circulated through the whole population. But this was one of Paul's personal letters that he was just writing to the Philippian church. And, and as we go on, you'll understand why, as I try not to take up too much of your time this morning, Paul had a reason why he wrote this private letter to the Christians over in Philippi. So it wasn't for the circulation to all the churches, but he was focusing just on the Philippian Christians. So Paul thanked the believers, number one, if you go back and read, starting from verse one, you'll find out that Paul began to thank them uh, for helping him when he had a need. Uh, this is where a lot of people quote Philippians 4 19, and we won't make it there, but this is the reason why. Uh, so the point of it is, is that we look at why. Why is it that there is a continuation of God's good work in our life? So Paul also wanted to tell them why he could be full of joy uh, despite him being in prison in his upcoming trial. So here Paul was faced with all of these things going on in his life, but yet he took time out to write to the Philippians because they were so dear to him because of what the things that they did for him when no one else would do it. So Paul counseled the Philippians uh, about humbleness and unity and warned them about potential problems they would face. And I feel that Paul is talking to all believers now because now that we're reading the word of God, if this letter is circulating to all of us. So Paul has warned them and he has warned us is that we're going to face problems and we're going to face trials in life. But because you face a trial, before, because you face trials or tribulations, it does not mean that you are less important to God. You have to understand something is that the human beings are the most important race or thing that God created. It is the most important to God because we uh, exemplifies the very essence of God. The Bible said we were created in his likeness and in his image. We were created. So we're very dear. We're so dear to God that many of you all have read or have heard the scriptures where the angels even ask God, God, what is man that thou art so mindful of man? We're so important to God that there were a time that we needed to be brought back to God. The money couldn't do it, the gold, the silver, the stones, the jewel, nothing. We were so precious to God. The Bible says that in John 3, 16, and this is why John said these words, why Jesus said, is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's security on our eternity. So this is why John was putting that point. Is because God has begun a work in us. So the next time that you may have a problem or a situation you need to realize is that what God started, everyone shout, he will finish. He will finish. And see, one thing you need to know about God is that God would not fail. God would not allow what he starts to fail. God would not give up. And what I love about God is, regardless of how bad the situation may be, God would not give up on us. Because to give up on you right now is for God to admit to defeat. And we know that the Bible has already said that we have the victory. If you believe that, give God a hand. So here, because of the great distance between the congregation that Paul had founded, because if you know Paul's life, Paul went about establishing churches everywhere. So he founded the church over in Philippi. So he was such a great distance because he was in prison and going through trials. He could no longer personally oversee them all. So he was compelled to write letters to teach them and encourage them. This is what Paul did with the churches he couldn't visit. This is why we have the, all the epistles or the letters of Paul because he couldn't reach them personally, but he still taught them through his letters and encouraged them. And you may be wondering how was Paul able to do that? Fortunately, Paul had a staff of volunteers. 
Okay, now we get into the part why he was writing these things. It was including Timothy, Mark, and Ephraim, who personally delivered these letters for Paul. And not only did they deliver these letters to the uh, Philippians people, but they remained there with the congregation for a while to teach them and encourage them because they were with Paul at all these times. Now, even though Paul was in prison, Paul was allowed to have visitors. And Paul was allowed to have uh, his staff to even be with him. So when they come around Paul, he would write these letters and they would take them and they would go. And not just deliver them or just read them, but they would also stay with them. So I'm kind of painting a spiritual picture here that I'm putting myself in a position with Timothy then that I spent some time with Paul while he was in prison. And now I've got the letter that Paul wrote, not to Philippians, but I want you to picture it, that Paul is writing this letter to you this morning. Amen? He's letting you know how much he appreciates you and encouraging you that God has begun a good work in all of us and God is going to continue it until the day that he returned. So this is the first of many times that Paul used the word joy in his letter. Remember he spoke about his joy for them. Uh, <clears throat> and the Philippians were remembered with joy and thanksgiving. Saints, the Bible have already declared it's a good thing when the man of God can approach God on the behalf of the people. Because one thing that I've, I've learned is that when, when the pastor goes before God, he goes before God on the behalf of the people. He represents the people to God. Most times we get it backwards and think that we're representing God to the people, but we're representing the people to God. Amen? So when we look at what Paul was saying, is that he was giving thanks for them. So whenever Paul prayed, that's what he did. He just simply thanked God for the Philippian people. Now, if you notice Paul's teachings, you will find that Paul often spent a lot of time thanking the Philippians more than any other church that he founded, like the Corinthians and all of them. So Paul was thanking because Philippians was very, very dear to Paul because of what they did. So Paul prayed, but by helping Paul, they were helping Christ's cause. And this is one thing you need to understand, is when you help the pastor in any capacity in ministry, whether it's giving, whether it's ushering, whether it's ministry, whether it's singing, musician, whatever it is, whenever you help the man of God, you're helping him with the cause that God had called him to do. Now remember when God sent vision, as we were stated, years ago is that the vision uh, most people say that the vision is for the pastor. No, God gives the vision to the pastor and the pastor gives the vision to the people. The scripture says to write the vision, make it plain so they that read it may run. So in other words, when God gives vision, it is for you. So anytime there is a vision, it is never for the man of God, but it's for the people of God. So again, we're right back here with Paul addressing the Philippians and encouraging them. Now earlier I used the words humility and humbleness, you know, because this is what Paul was encouraging them. And I want to encourage all of us is that we need to remember that we should walk in the spirit of humbleness. In all ways, not arrogance, not the spirit of anger, uh, 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 not the spirit of discord, but we need to always walk in the spirit of humbleness. Because when one humbles themselves, then God exalts. Amen? So we should never think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. And what we mean about that, I think very highly of myself in Christ. But what, but what I'm to interpret why he said those words is that you don't look at someone who may be less fortunate or, or may be unsaved and then you exalt yourself compared to them. Uh, the way you keep yourself humble is take a little in advice from the Bible is that compare yourself with Christ. Then we will see just how far out the mark we are. And people, listen, that is a humbling experience. It will humble you to know how far it is easy if I know that Deacon Brown was a stranger and, and I see that he's drunk and alcoholic. I can easily stand there and say, oh God, I'm so glad I'm not like that alcoholic right there. You know, I'm this perfect Christian and I'm this and I'm that. But when I match myself up to Christ, then I can't say those things because Christ was perfect in everything. So the Bible says, and I'm getting off track here, but I'm bringing you right back. The Bible says, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So he's not talking about in the flesh. Because
because this is what we tend to match ourselves up with each other by the flesh standard. But when he says, be ye perfect as the Father in heaven, he's speaking about that, that, that inward man, that spirit man that was created in his likeness and his image. Amen? Amen. Everyone shout the continuation of God's good work. Look at your neighbor and minister to them for a few seconds and say, God has begun a good work in you. Amen. So regardless of what's going on in your life, you have to understand. We make choices, and they're not always the greatest choices. Amen. But yet it's still the good thing to know about that is God is still working in us. Even when we make the wrong choice, God is still working. Not just working, but God is doing a good work. Even when we fall, when we falter, guess what? God's work does not stop because in that his grace is made available. Remember Paul said, uh, let God remove this thorn from my flesh. But what was Jesus' words to him? My grace is sufficient. So even what we're going through, God is still working in us. Can you say that? God is working in me. Say it again with confidence. God is working with, in me. And I use the word confident because Paul starts off verse 6 with that. He says, be confident of this very thing. So you need to be confident in the very thing. What thing was Paul talking about? Paul was talking about the continuation of the work that God start, started in you. Why did Paul tell us that? Because he wanted to encourage us and wanted to alert us and inform us never to give up because God is continuing to work in us. Regardless how dark the situation may be, God is still working in us. Regardless of how young you are, God started a good work. Regardless of how old you are, God started a good work. Don't care if you did drugs all your life and now you started, look, God started a good work the day you was in your mother's womb. God started a good work in you. Amen? We just made the wrong choices along the way. But the best thing about that is God, His grace was sufficient. His mercy was available every point and every step of the way. If I had David here the witness this morning, David would take us to the 23rd numbers of Psalms and he would say this. David would say that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So that lets us know that what God had begun, he's going to continue with. Give God a hand clap for that. So back to what Paul was dealing with the Philippians here. He prayed for them. He loved them. He praised them. He exalted them. Why? The Philippians were willing to be used by God for whatever he wanted them to do. Now this is what gets most of us in trouble because we are, I've heard people say this a lot, God use me however you want me to use me. Have your way with me, Lord. Have your way through me, Lord. Have your way in me, Lord. Well, you need to understand what God is doing. Uh, this is why I, I, I made a statement, and I won't call up no names. I made a statement, and I said, you know, people should, people should quit saying that when they end up in prison uh, or in jail, they often say, well, you know what, I'm on a mission from God. That's not one of God's missions, trust me. Because if you go out and rob somebody and you go to jail or prison, that's not God's mission for you. That was you made a choice and there's consequences behind your choices. Now, when we look at, if you out on the street corners, or you in here and we're preaching Christ, we're teaching Christ, and they come in here and say, look, Bangs, I don't want you all mentioning Jesus no more. We're exiting out this Christianity stuff, and we don't want no one mentioning Jesus. Well, if we continue to preach Jesus and teach Jesus, and then they put us in prison, now we are under God. Uh, mission because the Bible says that if you're put in prison let it be for righteous sake not unrighteous so see when Paul was in prison not even prison can hold you because if you go back to Paul's life when he was in prison because of being a Christian hey when he went to prayer now most people say him and Silas they prayed and they said I don't go with that because they're going with the first alphabets of their name I believe that they did this in unity because everything we do ought to be in unity. They prayed and they sunk. They took their mind off their situation. And the Bible said that God sent the quake and the cells of the doors of the jail open. And you all know the story. I don't want to get off into that. But that's a good story to read. So when Paul said that the Philippians 
were partners in the gospel, he was pointing out their valuable contribution in spreading God's message. And see, this is what it's all about, is you becoming a partner with God and with the man of God. They contributed through their practical help uh, when Paul was in Philippi and through their financial support when he was in prison. Uh, brothers and sisters, listen, as you help your pastor through prayer, hospitality, and financial donation, you become partners with me in doing God's work. So this is why people need to understand is that God don't just accredit just the pastor. He accredited everyone because we're all together. If you look at what he told Moses, when Moses was leading Israel out of Egypt, God would always tell Moses, go and tell my people. So when you need to understand something, that you are God's people, you are God's children. When the man or woman of God stand before you and say, thus said the Lord, they're speaking on the behalf of God that God wants you to know something. So why am I talking about the continuation of God's good work? It's because God wants you to know is that regardless of what you're going through, the work is still in progress. Amen? We may not see it. Others may not see it, but the work is in progress. You know, most of we say that the most important people are not those in the spotlight, but those that are behind the scene. See, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, that's when we put the spotlight on Jesus. I'll draw, but the Father is in the background working through the Son. Amen? So it makes them all partners together. So God has begun this great work in us. So God, who begun a good work in us, continues it throughout our lifetime and would finish it when we meet him face to face. This is why we often encourage people when you hear the older saints say, I just want to see him, the one that died for me. You know, they got a song that they sing, I just want to see him and look up on his face. It's because the good work that he began in us, it'll continue through our lifetime. Now most people, you got to get this because maybe you got it, I wasn't that bright. I used to always think that, okay, this, this is going to be continued, but see, it stops when you die. Because when you're dead, there's no work. That's why Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For when night cometh, no man can work. So what we have to understand is the good work that God started in us, it'll continue during our lifetime. So the fact of the matter is, is that regardless through life, how many of you have had trials? Yeah. Tribulations. Ups and downs. Probably if you like me or join me in some cases, you probably have more downs than you have ups. You know, situations, illness, sicknesses. But guess what? Through all of that, the great thing that I find joy is the work is still in progress. How many of us slipped and failed? Now, I'm not talking about walking and slipping and falling. I'm talking about in your Christian life, since you've been born, since you've been saved, since you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and all of that. How many of you can raise your hands and say, I have fallen several times. But you know what the amazing part of it is? Even when we fall in our spiritual life, you know, most people want to admit to that because they want everyone to know, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't do those things. I don't fall. I don't have those problems because Jesus keep me. But let me tell you something. You're greater than all the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers. And they brought people back from the dead. They laid hands and folk were healed. And yet they failed. But see, it, 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 it is not the condition of who you are or what you're going through. It's about the work that's in you. The Bible says, not by might, not by power, says the Lord, but by my spirit. And see, it has always been about the work that he has begun in us. It is the work, the process, the progress that's inside of us that he's doing because one does not change from the outside in, one changes from the inside out. So you see, we work on the outer body, but God works on the inner man. Because at the end of this process, this outer body is going to be did away with. I'm not hating on people that like to die. I'm not hating on people that like to go and go to the gym and work out and all of that and want to keep your fingers together and all of that. That's good. I just thank God that my little chubby body, as long as I got good health and I got strength, I'm just feeling good. Why? I'm not taking this one with me to help. So Paul said that body exercise is good, but it profits so little. 
You know, the, the most part that we need to work on is our spiritual man because that's where the work is. That's where the work is. Now, I can take the two and I can compare them. You know, if, if, if you're working out, it takes discipline. It takes self-control. It takes staying within your boundaries. It takes doing different exercises for different muscles. In other words, if you want to work on your tricep, if you want to, the tricep is back. I just, you know, y'all tell me that I do a little working out. Tricep is the muscle behind the arm. The bicep is here. If you want to work on a tricep, you don't do a curl because the curl works on the bicep. If you want to work on a tricep, you do a push exercise. That works on the muscle back there. Why am I saying this? Because Paul spoke about bodily exercise. We need to figure out how can I work on my spiritual man? See? Because we think prayer just takes care of all the spiritual man. No, it don't. You have a lot of things that you have to work on. If you want to work on being humble, you can't pray your way through humbleness. You have to discipline yourself and you have to work on it when those trying times come upon you. You have to be able to humble yourself. Amen? You've got a hand clap for that. You know, so uh, we, we know that jogging and running is good for the body. But also Paul said that we're running a spiritual race. So we have to keep our inner man. Why? He has begun a work on the inside of us. And because he has begun the work, we have to do our part also. Amen? So you just can't sit at the table with a five pound weight in one hand and a T-bone steak in the other hand and a bowl of ice cream and say I'm working out, but you're not doing anything for progress. Hello, somebody. So what are you saying, Pastor? You just can't pack your Bible under your arm and say what you're getting done. Baby, you got to open it, you got to pray, you got to read, you have to meditate. The Bible says search the scriptures daily for in them you think. It is a, a continuous work that God is doing in us. Amen. So what we need to do, for one thing we need to do, you know, let's go on the spiritual diet. One thing, here's a few things you need to cut out of it because there's a work. You need to cut out your daily routine of your dieting. You need to cut out negative thinking and negative speaking. You need to cut out anger. You need to cut out self-satisfaction. You need to cut out self-exaltation. And you know the rest, just all of that other stuff. Cut it out and replace it with the word of God. Amen? Amen. So everyone shout, God has begun to work through me. So God's work for us began when Christ died on the cross in our place. Because it should have been the human nature that died because God could have just spoke and everybody could have laid down and died. But Christ gave his life for us on the cross. That begun the good work for them because God gave too much for us to just end this good work. God is not going to let just a little sin of lying rupture all of his great work. God's not going to let just a little sin of adultery or fornication hinder his good work. There is one thing that can hinder the progress that God started in us. And it's not what we think it is. We think it's sex. We think it's power. We think it's money. We think it's lying. We think it's drugs. We think it's alcohol. All you're doing is really ruining yourself with all of that. So what is it? There is one thing that will fight against the work that God has begun in us. There is one thing that will stop the process. There is one thing that will stop the progress. There is one thing that will take all the great work that God has begun in us and it will just end it all. And you're wondering, what is that one thing? The Bible says, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is an unforgivable sin. Therefore, if you blaspheme, and we didn't got enough time to tell you what blaspheme is, but between now and next week, we'll get it in there. But, you know, so when you blaspheme, that stops everything because that cannot be forgiven. So that means all the good work that God started in us, it ends. So that's why we need to be careful and understand what we should and should not do. Amen? Amen. So the next time you look at somebody that's out there drinking or doing drugs, please don't tell them you're going to hell. The next time you see somebody, you know, um, being one of these young folks or, or somebody you know coming out the motel, please don't tell them they're going to hell. <laughs> oh, y'all y'all know I'm just being real. Y'all know how it is. Driving by and may see Kenny Ken car coming out of the motel. First thing y'all want to do, Kenny Ken going to hell. <laughs> may see Billy walking out the store.
Mexico with a six pack of bush. And first thing we say, look at that deacon. Oh, I tell you, he's going straight to hell. See, and we don't understand that, that there's a penalty for certain things, but guess what? The work is still in progress. A little motel ain't going to stop the progress. He's going to have to answer to it. Amen? Because, see, he may end up making a baby, and then with baby come responsibilities, and when you leave the mama, you still got the drama. Amen? Somebody, it's called Mama Drama Child Support Case. Amen? Same thing. You catch Brother Billy come out with a six-pack of beer. No, he's not going to hell. Amen? But he's going to be talked about because we will talk. Amen? Boy, I tell you, Brother Billy up there praying hard. I got drunk while he was praying. Why? I smelled all the alcohol coming out from him. So we're going to talk. Is that going to stop the progress? No, it does not stop the progress. Amen? But now, if, 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 if Pastor Bain standing before you and tell you how great God is in my life when you see the work, and then I blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, guess what? That stops the work. Amen. See, God don't play with certain. He told Moses, hey, you know what, Moses? Come here. I want you to leave my people, and I want you to take them, and I'm going to take them to a promised land that flow with milk and honey. That was the progress. That was the work. That was the assignment. But then they say, hey, is this all your God can give us is bread? So Moses went to God. God rained down quail. And then they kept on complaining. Kept on complaining. God told Moses, go to the rock. They can get water. Well, Moses went. He smoked the rock, and he said some things that was inappropriate to the people of God. That ended it. Moses didn't make it to the promised land. See? So we need to understand the work that's in progress. Are y'all understanding that now? Now, I don't want you feeling so good about yourself. Kenny, I'm jumping on you this morning. Don't feel so good about yourself that you go to Motel 6, Motel 8, and all them different motels, and you get a VIP in every last one of them, and say, well, pastor say, it ain't going to stop the work, so I'm just going to go to each one of them. I'm going to take Jane over here. I'm going to take Sally over here, Tammy over here. I'm going to do all Now, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not telling I want to make that clear. Those of you watching, I'm not telling. I was using that as an example. <laughs> Amen? So please don't go, husbands, wives, please don't go and say, well, pastor, say I can. It's going to know. You, you can do what you want to do, but it's consequences and everything. Amen? I'm just letting you know, nothing you can do that will stop the progress except blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Amen? So now watch this here. So when we talk about all of this here, sometimes we, when we look into our life, God begins this, uh, his work in us began when Christ was on the cross and gave his life, okay? Now the Holy Spirit lives in us, enabling us to be more like Christ every day. Amen? Everyone shout, it's a process. See, we, we, we think we get saved today and we become just like Christ. Baby, it's all I just want to learn. That's why I'm careful when I say, Lord, I want to be just like you. See, you need to know what you're saying because that you, you, you have to study Jesus' life. Amen? So now the Holy Spirit, he will help us. It's a process every day. So Paul is describing the process of Christian growth and maturity that begins when we accept Jesus and continues until he returns. Amen? Now, sometimes you may feel like you're not making progress in your spiritual life. How many of you ever feel like that? Feel like no matter how much you pray, how much I had a, a, a one of those experiences the other night, God knows. I, I, you know, Sister Dale, I was, I was, my God, I was, it was late, and I was trying to go to sleep, Brother Willie, and, and I'm going to tell you what messed me up. The TV was on earlier, and they were, they were, they were commercially one of Teddy Pendergraft's songs. Uh, what was that song called? Turn down the light. Yeah. And my God, I, I laid down, sister, and I couldn't go to sleep for nothing. All I just kept hearing, it was just, just in my mind, the song was just singing. And now I'm like, okay, the lights are off, and all I'm trying to sing, my mind started going, I, I, you know, and, and it was just messing with me. I looked at the clock, 1.30 a.m., I said, Lord, I'm in trouble now. Because I had to get up at 4.30 to put me on a pit. And then I just went to pray and I said, you know, I said, but let me tell you what would help me out. I had to refocus my mind on the word of God. And then I had to refocus and start saying, God, you begin a good work in me. And I know that work is going to continue. God, I need some rest. I need some peace of mind. And then my mind just went on and I was able to drift off to sleep. But dog only woke right back up at 4.30. And what do you think I was faced with? Turn off the light. Guess what? Now notice in all of that, I didn't blame the devil. Because it ain't nothing wrong with listening to uh, what Teddy was saying. He was just singing to his woman. I don't know if it was his wife or what. But anyway. 
anyway, the whole point of it was is that I want to, well, the reason why I'm using myself as an example to let you know, don't care how long you've been saved, don't care how long you've been in church, don't care what title you work, there is still work of a progress that's going on on the inside of you, amen? See, it didn't stop the progress because I was able to still make that connection with God. Amen? So it goes to show you, brothers and sisters, that God has begun this process and God is not going to lose. He had already said in his word, before the devil have more souls than me, I'll turn these stones into souls. So we need to know that the process is there. So this is what Paul was doing. So sometimes we, we feel that we're not making that progress. It seems like when you make a few steps forward, it seems like life can take you six steps back. I'm going to help you with that. I just always think, Lord, you know I'm slipping. I know sometimes life will take you back to teach you something that you missed along the way. You know how when you're seeking for something and you're looking for something and, and sometimes you have to go all the way back and start from the beginning and retrace your steps. So don't never be so hard on yourself to think that you are out of the will of God and that things have ended for you. Everyone shout, it's just a continuation of God's work. Yes. See, grace does not start today and end tomorrow. Grace is continuing throughout life. Amen. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not telling you to go out there and walk out today and say, well, you know what? I'm going to continue to work for God so I can go do what I want to do. No, I'm not telling you that because, see, I may be preaching your funeral, amen? Because if Kenny get caught coming out of there with somebody and, 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 and little sister there, she may snap. She may have one of the moments. What's that girl name in, in the news right now? Say it. Uh, the one who stabbed her boyfriend and shot him in the head. See, y'all don't watch the news. A read. A, a, re, a what? Okay, yeah. See, y'all need to start watching the news to keep what's going on. Men, these women ain't playing. They're sticking with death do us part and they haven't even took a vow. So, uh, again, I'm not telling you about that and do your thing. I'm not telling Brother Billy go out there and give him a fifth of Jack Daniels and just turn it up. He may not wake back up. Amen? So I just want to get that clear. Y'all got it? Am I making sense? Touch somebody and say, don't do it. But now, no, 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 and how many of you know you see a door that's cracked? We open that bad boy one here. And the first thing we say, well, they ain't want me to come in, they should lock. <laughs> see, I know how people, I look, I didn't just become a human today. I was born a human, amen? So I know how this thing go. I don't understand Paul. When Paul said the things that I should do, I find myself not doing them. But everybody shout, God's work is still in progress. See, it's still in progress. So even though your spiritual life may not be where you want it at, God's work is still in progress. So listen to me. When God starts a project, he completes it. Amen? You ought to clap your hands right there. Just to let you know, he didn't start when he started in you and not going to complete it. As with the Philippians, God will help you grow in grace until he has complete his work in your life. See, God's purpose and God's plan is to complete his work in your life. Amen? And he's going to continue it. When you are discouraged, you need to remember that God will not give up on you. When you have fallen, you need to remember God will not give up on you. When you have fallen sin, God will not give up on you. When you are sick, God, come here, Joe, will not give up on you. When you are being put in prison, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God will not give up on you. If you're in the dungeon, if you're in the dark, or dungeon, rather, or whatever, God will not give up on you. When you're accused, God will not give up on you. Why? It's the progress of the work that he has started. Amen? He promises to finish the work that he has begun. And we know that the Bible says God is not like man. He will not lie. He will not change. <clears throat> so he won't give up on us. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. So when you feel incomplete, unfinished, or distressed by your shortcomings, remember God's promises and his provision. You may be feeling a little down. You may be feeling a little out. But clap your hands and say, the work is still in progress. Even when you sleep, God is still working. Even when you're in your worst state of mind, God is still working. Even when you're mad, when you're angry, when you're talking 
If you miss me from singing down here, don't worry about it. Why? I'm in glory. Why? The process says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Paul said, if this earthly house of this temple shall dissolve, we have a building that's in glory that's not made by hands of man. It's just a process. And you know what the process says? The process says, you love mama, you love grandma, you love your child, you love your grandchild. If they're dead in their grave, baby, just go through the process. Why? The process says, if you live right, and at the end of his work, when you walk through the pearly gates, you're going to see mama, you're going to see daddy, you're going to see the babies. Listen, I tell people in the morning, I have a son over in glory. Only spent one day with him and he died, but guess what? It's the process, baby. Why? It's because I know where he's at, and I know one day it's all about the process. Do I want to see grandma? Absolutely, I do. Do I want to see grandpa? Absolutely, I do. Do I want to see my loved ones? Of course I do. But you know what? Before I see them, I want to see the ones who died for me. I don't want to be like Thomas. I'm not going to doubt. I believe, but I just want to see the print in his hands and realize that it should have been in ours. I just want to see the print in his feet to realize that it should have been us. I want to see the pierce in his side where they poked him at because it should have been us. I want to see the marks on his head from when they put the crown because it should have been us, but because of the process. Oh, y'all don't, y'all don't get, I got to leave this stuff alone. Because what God started in us, he refused to let sin stop. So the Bible says he searched all over and couldn't find no name to swear by. So he swore by his own name. And because the work that God started in you was so great, until he gave his son a body, sent him down to earth, he died.
just right where you at, raise your hand. Thank you. 